Hello and welcome to the TES Secondary Maths Resource of the Week number 5 with me Craig Barton. Now thankfully the end of term is well and truly in sight. I've got one more week left at school, I cannot wait until Friday and hopefully you're something similar as well. And we all know what it's like this time of year, the kids rock up to lessons and the first thing they say is, Sir, are we watching a DVD today? And it's tough because the chances are they're watching DVDs in other subjects. And I'm torn between a desire to keep them doing mathematics, because after all, that's what they're here for, and there's only so many times I can watch the first 40 minutes of Toy Story 3. But also my desire to recognise that, yeah, it is the end of year, they've worked pretty hard, I hope I've worked hard, and perhaps we should be doing something different. And then this time last year, I stumbled upon an absolute goldmine, and it has changed my approach to the end of term. And that goldmine is called The Pirate Game. Now, I know what you're thinking, because I was thinking the same thing. That sounds absolutely rubbish. And when I read it, I thought, all right, that's actually pretty good, but it's probably only going to work for my year sevens. Well, let me tell you, my year tens are currently demanding we play the pirate game. My year twelves are demanding we play it. All the members of staff are already booking in when they're doing the pirate game. It has caused an absolute revolution in my school. And I please, just, just try it out. So here it is, the pirate game kindly uploaded by Mr. Collins himself, Paul Collins. I'm not gonna go into too much detail about what it's about because Paul has kindly provided a guide and a worksheet, but let me just give you a little overview. Um, the kids get a grid like this, and what they have to do um, on their own is they have to put one boat any, on any square, one dagger on any square, one present, blah, 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 blah. They fill this grid out and then fill out the rest of the squares with one five thousand, two three thousands, and so on. So every kid's got their own grid. And then you choose one of your students to go first and they pick a square, any square. So they might say B4. And then the rest of the class must look what they've got in square B4. And if they got one of these coins, like so one of these amounts, like 3,000 or 1,000, then they put that in their cash pile. That's, that's them to keep. That's a good one for them. But the chances are some students are going to have some of these interesting looking symbols in there. And that's when it all starts kicking off. Because, say for example, you're lucky and you have a little boat in there, then you put your hand up and say, sir, I've got a boat. And that means that you can rob anyone's points that you like. But of course, twist is, you've, you've no idea what other people have got. So a bit of tactics comes into play there. Can you read the expression of your classmates to know how many points that they've got? And then it gets a little bit violent here because if you've got a dagger, you can kill someone. And if you kill them, all their cash is absolutely wiped out to zero. Unless, of course, they produce a mirror back at you. If they've, if they've uncovered a mirror previously, then they block it. The dagger turns back on you. You're dead and you've no points. And you can just see the carnage, but also the fun that's going to ensue from this. There's loads of different symbols. Swap scores is a good one. Uh, of course, again, how do you know what the other person's got? Well, what Mr. Collins says is keep, encourages the students to keep a track on their hit list for who are the people with the big money points. Uh, bomb's a bad one. You self-destruct there. You're back down to zero. I like this as well. Skull and crossbones. You can wipe out an entire row's points in your classroom unless they've got either a shield or a mirror to block it. Absolutely brilliant stuff. Uh, Mr. Collins also suggests tailor-making uh, this and adding your own little twists. And he suggests down here that other symbols that are being used in the department, a sweet symbol where you choose to give someone else a sweet. I like that one, a magnifying glass, where if you use that, you get to look at another person's score if, if you want to. Um, I'm going to suggest one that one that I've done. I put a little mystery symbol in there, a little question mark, and that is a mathematical challenge. So if you get a mystery question mark, you can come up to the front and you can choose to wager anywhere between 100 and 1,000 points. And if you pass the mathematical challenge, I give you that amount of coins. If you fail it, then you lose that amount of coins. And that's brilliant because it means I can differentiate. I'm sorry to bring a bit of kind of teaching terminology in here, but it means if I've got a year seven class, I can give them a little times table question or, or do the seven times table backwards. Or if I've got my year 12s, who again, I cannot believe are so keen on the pirate game, I can give them an expression to differentiate or something along those lines. So look, you may think it sounds a bit woeful. And again, the other thing is when you try and explain this to the kids the first time, they're going, sir, what on earth are you on about? 
out. We're not four years old. Why are we playing the pirate game? I promise you, six minutes into it, they are absolutely obsessed trying to collect all this bit of money in. They're producing shields, mirrors, left, right and centre, waiting to get a dagger. It's an absolute classic. And of course, the winner is the person who's collected the most cash at the end. So it's a game of strategy, luck, bit of mathematics in there, forming alliances, all that kind of stuff. It's an absolute classic. And that is why it is my final resource of the week for this academic year. So I hope that that helps you get to the end of term in one piece. And above all, I hope you have a long, happy, relaxing and very restful summer. And I will see you in September for another round of resource of the week. Take care and bye for now.